Welcome back to the Real Estate Rat Pack Radio Show with Chris, Joe, and Rob. The crew is taking your calls, so dial in at 1 800 808 5548. And we're, we're back. back. <laughs> you know, time flies, you're having fun, or in the case of a lot of our guests, going to get coffee, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I'm lonely. <laughs> There's no, we're lonely. There's We've never done this here, before. Man. Exactly. Uh, Tim, how you doing, buddy? What have you been up to today? This is the great Tim O'Neill with State Farm. Our great sponsor, great individual, and an individual who's actually in the house to talk a little bit about how the storms are impacting this world right Holy now. Holy cow, this is like it's a lot of the pressure. worst week yeah. ever <laughs> yeah. for Tim. Well, uh, you know, it happens all the time. Flooding, when we tell people... That you know, and if, well, others have said it. The only person still left standing, right? Rain right. happens. If it if it rains for three days in your subdivision, it's you're going to flood. Right. It, but the potential is there, and, and and sellers will tell you, or you know, the prior owner, oh, it was never flooded here, and you know, the, this is all these discussions are taking place in in the context of properties where the lender is not requiring fl- flood insurance, right? Where, where it's optional, and so. Too many times people interpret that when you know, they, they hear, okay, it's not, I'm not required to buy flood insurance, and they, they interpret that to mean I'm never going to have a flood. Well, doesn't optional mean savings? Well, it does. <laughs> because when, when somebody, you know, if they're, if they're in what's called a preferred risk, you know, right. where, where it's $425. Right. That's how much they're saying no to and, and, and having to, you know, fade the risk of having this happen. And so you save $425, great job. Yeah, yeah. It, no. it, not much of a savings, though, if you <laughs> no. have to. And, and again, you get enough rain in a short enough period of time. Anywhere. It's flat. That is correct. And we have so much, uh, the, the clay soil absorbs some only so much water. And that at some true. point, it just runs off at that point. Most <laughs> people don't realize, though, y'all have a great rapid I mean, response team that anymore. comes in. You know, I mean, from a, obviously from a State Farm perspective, and, and it's really good on the ground. I mean, everything I've always seen and heard from State Farm in regards to their response on national emergencies like this is just phenomenal. Well, in flood, the uh, it's an NFIP thing now. Okay, gotcha. And okay, I saw so, them in concert. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a national flood insurance program. Right, the national flood insurance <laughs> program. They they send out the the adjusters, um, but we're still able to counsel our customers during the claim process and let them know what's going on. But. Um, it's, it's 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 a difficult process to get. There's through. no there's very it's very rarely to have a great outcome because you know the coverage is limited. You know the and, and limitation is two fifty, isn't it? On yeah, that's insurance typically, and you know it's not it's not meant it's basically disaster relief. You know under a different is, uh, it's not necessarily meant to package, re- rebuild your yeah, house. It's not yeah. meant to put it back. All ever, you know it's not going to be. And, like and on, it was. It's never going to be like it was on your goods and things like that. And flood was the cause of loss of your personal belongings. What does it usually cover? Well, it covers all of your personal belongings, but it doesn't pay replacement costs. Flood insurance, like if you have a fire, God forbid, and your homeowners, we're going to p- give you enough money to buy all new things and then put you back, put it back like it was. But flood insurance, it's you know, cents on, on, dollar, cents yeah. on the dollar, everything's yeah. depreciated, and um, you know, but but like we've seen just now, you don't need people. They interpret, they think that you need a four foot rushing wall of water, you know, but really, an inch and a half of water in your house is all it takes. And so, even if you don't have, you know. Water up to the gutters, then. Can you talk? So just instead, a little bit. instead of a foot, an inch is better. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> can you would uh, would you discuss a little bit about the difference between flood insurance and rising water? Because we hear on the news right now, some people their insurance isn't going to cover because they didn't get flooded. They had rising water issues. So what's the difference? I there? think there's a misnomer there because rising water th- it is makes, a flood. Yeah, th- th- that's what a flood is. Well, there, and again, there's uh, on, it's on the news saying that some of the people that even though they have flood insurance, they're not covered. So what 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 reasons would they not be covered? I can't think of one because I mean uh, they don't have the insurance. Yeah, they don't have the insurance. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, but, I mean, they you, said they you can get a flood. flood you can get a flood from uh, like a broken pipe. And normal insurance will cover that. Yeah, we call that water. You know, we call in the industry we call water damage means when you have domestic water coming out of your pipes where it's not supposed to is water damage, and flooding is natural disaster related. But you can have, you know, you have accumulation of rain. But, I mean, rising water is the accumulation of rain, and then you can also have rushing water and you know velocity zones and all those kinds of things. But if it's if it's water if it's water coming in your house as a result of flooding in the area, 
is not. Well, let's talk about not a distinction. What if, what if it's coming through the roof and causing damage? Well, that's homeowners. Okay, so that is covered. Yeah. The, so, while the rain is falling, it's a homeowner's problem. Once it hits the ground, it begins to accumulate, and then it becomes a flood insurance. And it's problem. not flood if it comes from the sky, unless you're Noah. Oh, gotcha. Yes. So <laughs> there, well, there are a lot of arcs out there last week. Uh, so is there a difference with uh, uh, surge? Like if it's a hurricane type thing, if there's surge water versus, yeah, well, tidal, tidal surge, know, tidal surge, that's is that still that's, flood? Same, it same is, thing? it is. It's tidal waters and you know, wind driven tidal water. I mean, it, Katrina was you know a big uh, you know learning experience for everyone because you had both. You had hurricane force winds and torrential rains blowing and gushing and and storm surge at the same time, and you know it was heartbreaking because you saw a lot of examples of. Homes that weren't there anymore. There was just a slab, or sometimes not even. Or mm-hmm. in, in the case of elevated homes, there were a couple of a p- couple of piers and pilings left. But the house was gone, and so the question was: Did this house actually sustain rain and wind damage before the storm surge came and d- made the house disappear? So th- they were having this totally abstract uh, claim situation because, really, you know, if the house sustains if the house sustained wind and and rain damage before it was completely destroyed, there was actually some payment due because I mean the loss occurred, and then the house was completely removed from the scene That's by crazy. A, yeah, it was a, it wasn't a question I had I was there, I had photos, yeah, I had a lot of <laughs> agents talk about this is that their they their house was flooded, and they needed immediate you know help of some kind. What's the first thing they should do? They've got maybe two inches of water in the house. Well, you should always understand it's your. It's still your house. It's your property. Even when, in any kind of insurance claim, it's still your house. And you do what a normally prudent person does. You protect your property from further damage, and you begin the cleanup process. And you know you don't. You never want to feel like your hands are tied because you know I can only do you know what, what the adjuster says I can do. It's right. Your, it's your property, and and you're expected and required to start to mitigate the loss and clean it up and protect it from. F- Further damage, and then in case of if it just means saving receipts and taking pictures, so that you can show that you did what a reasonably prudent yeah, person you can actually did. Have those, those little uh, what pumps that you can actually pump out water of the house pretty quickly. Even the ones that are driven by electric drills and things that are very inexpensive to have one of those around and, like, if you're in a flood prone area. And, and yeah, then you but, talk about what, what a prudent person would do, but we have Vaughn here. I mean, so you have to be, right. you have to measure. Well, that's what you call yeah. 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 And, <laughs> yeah. And a prudent person may not go wading through flood water because that's not, it's nasty. You know, yeah. so it, it, sometimes if, if your house is, you know, up to your kneecaps in water, then no, one's, no one would recommend you going in there and doing anything. I've been, so I've been pumping out to the outside for like, Hours straight, yeah. and, and it keeps staying the same level. I don't know. Joe, stop pumping. Joe, stop pumping. Right. No more pumping for Joe. Right. Uh, question. Uh, when you're saying cleaning up uh, insurance, because obviously we have black mold issues and things of that nature, and it, you know, after it's raining and flooding, it gets so hot and sticky and humid, it, perfect for mold growth. Um, would insurance pay for... Uh, mold remediation with outside of uh, the normal processes. If we have someone that can actually sterilize a home, and the homeowner finds a different way, how would that? How would the homeowner go about uh, producing invoice or suggestion to utilize a different vendor than you're used to? Well, the flood insurance contract says it covers direct loss by and from flooding meaning it got wet when you when you transition from it got wet to uh, you know it it got mold and mildew and other sorts of factors like that that are associated with a house that has no power typically because now the air conditioner is not going to run and you do got to so there's policy language in there that controls and it basically says you know they're not going to pay for any damage that was within your control to prevent and so if your house is totally full of water um, there's definitely going to be mold growth, and you know, as long as it, what, to my understanding, as long as it, you know, as long as you didn't neglect it, if you didn't just say, you know what, this is a great time to go on vacation. Let's just beat feet and get out of here. So, so you're saying, I don't want to deal with all if this If you wet do stuff, that and your house becomes a mold circus, you're going to have a problem under the, we'll leave under the windows the open because they will yeah. hold you to the standard of care of your own property. So you have to go down with the house, basically. What if you went on vacation before. 
And you're gone three days, and then the blood happens. And no one can yeah. hear And no one can hear that question. <laughs> yeah. That happens. That happens. Vaughn Here's this thing. If Here's this thing we call a microphone, Vaughn. Okay. <laughs> I actually had that in a non-flood uh, situation where somebody had had a, a hot water heater burst. Mm-hmm. And, but it was in a period, they had just left, and it was a period where it was, every, where it was raining, and everybody's driveway was wet. For, for the sake of everybody days. outside of the room, what was the question? Peace, brother. Uh, the question is, what happens if someone, say, leaves on vacation two days before that rainstorm? We got 11 inches overnight, and now their home is underwater, but they don't know it because they're in New York seeing a Broadway show. What happens? Well, uh, the standard is... In the end, did you behave like a reasonably prudent person would have behaved, or did you cause this? Did you cause the situation to get worse? Did you neglect? Were you neglectful? So I think it, it's just a it's, it's a subjective. Kind of subjective. Yeah, again, it's very subjective for Vaughn because you keep saying prudent person, <laughs> you know, so he's really struggling around that. <laughs> yeah, and the policy language is: if it was within your ability to control, and you didn't, then you're going to have a problem. So I think what I'm hearing is that you you you're not going to be covered under flood, but you are for fire. So if you have a flood, let it dry out and light it up. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, that was that was exactly what he was getting That's at. Common in the earthquake scenario when you have a hot, the, but, the, uh, the opinions of our guests are not necessarily the opinions of the Rat Pack. By right? the way, uh, just make sure or you, any prudent person or any or prudent, prudent person. or prudent yeah. person. Now we're talking about prudent and law abiding. Yeah. Well, when, when we come back from the break, I will discuss some of the uh, language, some of the wording that's used. Uh, when I treat homes to get rid of mold, because you don't use the M word, you don't say mold. But there are some things that insurance companies will pay for that I've had experience with. So when we come back from the break, we'll talk about that and about what to do if you're one of these people right now that without flood insurance and you have water in your home.